you might not even realize it's something you shouldn't do. And it's something I still see people doing. There is so much more to winterizing an RV than just blowing out or running antifreeze through the plumbing lines. Today, I wanna to show you 10 things that I do after I'm done winterizing the plumbing lines, things that you may not only be missing, but things that will save you headaches in the spring. I see it all the time, RVs in driveways, all buttoned up for the winter and the stabilizer jacks are down. However, you're not walking around inside the RV when it's winterized, so they're really serving no purpose. In fact, having stabilizers down while you're winterized could actually cause issues later. Let me explain. Let's say you have a slow leak on one of your tires. You're not paying a lot of attention to your RV over the winter. It leaks, the RV is going to drop. It's going to put excessive pressure on your stabilizer jack, and you could bend or damage your jack. Remember, these are not meant to hold the weight of an RV. They're only meant to apply a little bit of pressure between the ground in the RV to keep it stable. So you wanna keep your stabilizer jacks up over the winter. This is also a good time to hit these with a spray lubricant or rust preventative. This will just help protect them from the winter conditions. Once a month or so, I'll come out and cycle the jacks up and down a few times to keep them moving. Now, if your owner's manual tells you to put your stabilizer jacks down before you open or close your slide outs, you should definitely be doing that, but you'll wanna keep these up while your RV is winterized. Number two. Propane is not going to freeze until it reaches negative 306 degrees. So it is okay to leave your propane tanks outside over the winter. Just turn off your service valves. You do want to keep rain, snow, and ice off the tanks, the fittings, and the regulator. So if you have a propane tank cover, you're in good shape. If you don't have one of these, get one because they're not just for looks. You want to keep direct sunlight off of propane tanks as well. Most of us are probably washing the RV in the springtime, but it's also a good idea to wash your RV after you winterize it. Cleaning your rig before winter storage will prevent things like bird poop and road salt from staining the RV surfaces. And while you're washing the RV, keep an eye out for areas that need to be resealed or re -caulked. Because if it rains over the winter, water goes into areas it shouldn't go into, then it freezes and expands, and that's just not a good situation for anyone. So go ahead and wash and inspect your RV before winter storage. Number four. Okay, let's talk about batteries for a second, and I'm not talking about the 12 volt coach or chassis batteries. Instead, I'm talking about AA, AAA, nine volt batteries, button batteries. We all know what can happen to batteries in extremely cold weather. So as a precaution, I remove all the backup batteries I keep in the RV. And don't forget the devices that use batteries. These are things like remote controls, smoke detectors, electronic door locks, TPMS sensors, leveling indicators, clocks, flashlights, and power tools. It might be a little bit overcautious, but I'm just removing every single battery from inside the RV while the RV is winterized. Number five. Winter storage for batteries that aren't gonna be used is very simple. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is remove the battery. And as you're removing a battery, you should always be pulling the negative terminal off first. An easy way to remember which terminal goes first is if you're removing or subtracting a battery, think of the negative sign. If you're installing or adding a battery, think of the positive sign. Battery storage should be in a cool, dry area, like a garage, somewhere that does not freeze. Next, I connect a trickle charger. These will keep the batteries topped off and they will not overcharge the batteries. I'll put links to some trickle chargers below. The Battery Tender brand is all I've ever used on my RV and in my automotive stores. These trickle chargers will work on lead acid, flooded, AGM, and gel cell batteries as well. Now, after the trickle charger indicates that your battery is full, that's a good time to go ahead and check the water levels. If you do need to top off the water, make sure you're using distilled water. And remember, you always wanna charge a battery before you water it to prevent boil over. Now, if you have lithium batteries, I would advise checking your owner's manual or the battery manufacturer's website for winter care instructions. All lithium batteries are not the same, so there may be different storage recommendations based on the battery manufacturer. Did you know, unlike a lot of YouTube channels, we have never charged a membership fee for our viewers to watch any of our videos. All of our content is always free. We work with our channel sponsors to keep the lights on so there's never a cost to you. So I would like to thank today's video sponsor, RVMattress.com. They have a nice selection, mattresses for all budgets, and they have the oddball RV sizes that you won't find in a residential mattress store. You'll find the RV Bunk, 
three different RV king sizes and the short queen among others. Their website will point you to the right mattress based on how you sleep. Shipping is free. They come with a 10 year warranty and they have a factory right here in Arizona. If you don't like your mattress, you can return it or exchange it for a different model within 120 days. And honestly guys, we loved our mattress so much, we got another one for our house. Visit rvmattress.com forward slash RV tips. I'll put links down below. Use the coupon code RV tips at checkout and get 25% off your mattress. Number six. Temperature differences between enclosed areas and open areas can lead to moisture, which can also lead to mold growth. Most of you guys have probably seen what happens inside a fridge or a cooler that's been closed for a long time without temperature regulation. You can use these door cards that will prevent your door from closing or just use something from around the house. But whatever it is you do, leave your fridge and freezer doors open while your RV is winterized. Additionally, the winter is a great time to crack open all of your cabinets and drawers inside the RV. This gives all those enclosed areas a chance to breathe and air out for next year. Number seven. If you leave your RV in a public storage lot over the winter, I would highly recommend removing anything that has significant monetary or sentimental value, especially if it's stored on an off-site property. And aside from theft, there's also things like weather conditions that can go unnoticed long enough to damage things that are left inside the RV. So at the end of the day, no matter where you leave your RV, it's probably a good idea to remove all of the valuables and important things you don't wanna lose. Number eight. Personally, I just don't want to spend the time researching at what temperature olive oil freezes or grill spray or hand soap. So this next one, I'm going to keep really simple for you guys. Walk through the entire RV, take all the guesswork out of it and just remove anything that is liquid inside the RV. And don't forget, you probably have liquids and ointments in your first aid kit. And when you're putting your first aid kit back in your RV when it's time to dewinterize, that's also a good time to check any expirations on the medicine that's in there. Expired, expired, expired. Number nine. Something I'm doing every year is covering my tires. Keeping UV rays off your tires can help prevent dry rotting, cracking, and premature aging. And despite what you may hear, it's a scientific fact that UV light will damage the compounds in rubber. And even if that damage is minimal, tires are one of the most important things on your RV. I'm gonna do everything I can to prevent a blowout. Good tire covers are inexpensive. I'll put some links down below, and they don't take a lot of time to install. And don't forget your spare tire either. Number 10. This next one is common sense, but definitely worth mentioning. Close all of your windows and draw all of your shades. This will keep UV light off the furniture and the interior of the RV. Now, in regards to having some airflow inside the RV, I know some people crack their roof vents, and I think this is perfectly fine to do if you have vent covers. However, vent covers do not completely seal your roof vents, so under the right conditions, water, snow, and ice can get underneath those, so I always leave mine closed. However, what I will do is leave my stovetop vent open. That's a much more difficult way for water to get in, and it still leaves a little bit of ventilation inside the RV. I've also had a lot of people ask me if they should leave their sink or shower valves open during the winter. Personally, I have never left the sink and shower valves open. Mine are always closed, and after eight years of Pennsylvania winters, my plumbing is fine. Now, this is not an all-inclusive list because there are variables depending on which type of RV RV that you have. For example, if you have a drivable RV, you also have an engine. And that means a separate list of things to consider, such as a fuel stabilizer over the winter and topping off your engine fluids. But hopefully this video gets you thinking about things other than just the plumbing lines. As always, links to everything in this video are down below. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed or learned something from the video. And I'll put a link to our dewinterizing video on the screen now if you want to get a jump on what you're going to need to do in the spring.